subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 3rd of September. Curfew-like restrictions imposed in India's Jammu and Kashmir after separatist leader Gilani's death. Taliban co-founder Mullah Baradar to lead new Afghanistan government report suggests. and democracy is indispensable when tibet regains freedom from china says exiled president and now for all the details Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory imposed curfew-like restrictions on Friday to prevent any untoward incidents of violence in the restive regions after the death of popular separatist leader Syed Ali Gilani. Gilani for years led an umbrella alliance of secessionists known as the Hurriyat Conference. The group split in 2003 when hardliners led by Gilani who advocated Kashmir's merger with Pakistan walked out after moderates decided to hold talks with New Delhi. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory imposed curfew-like restrictions on Friday to prevent any untoward incident of violence in the restive regions after the death of popular separatist leader Syed Ali Gilani. Gilani, who died on Wednesday, had been unwell for some time, his family said. The city's main business area remained deserted with most shops closed and the movement of vehicles restricted. Authorities also cut internet connections and mobile networks in the Kashmir Valley since late on Wednesday. Situation puri tarah niyantran mein hai, puri tarah control mein hai. Pichle do din mein ek bhi kisi tarah ka vaka nahi hua hai. Isme awam ki logon ki bahut badi cooperation hai. Security forces badi sabro tahamal se, badi restraint se apna kam kar rahi hai. Sab jagah par ham logon ne dekha, Shrinagar, Badgam, Gandharbal kal dekhe, aaj ye Baramulla shahar dekha, baaki jagah bhi jaare hai. Among the most prominent political leaders in Kashmir, Gilani for years led an umbrella alliance of secessionists known as the Hurriyat Conference and had advocated Kashmir's merger with Pakistan. Meanwhile, amid India's concern that Afghanistan territory might be used for anti-India activity under the Taliban regime, the Islamist group spokesperson Sohail Shaheen in an interview with BBC Urdu said it has the right to raise its voice for Muslims anywhere, including in Kashmir. Shaheen's remarks are in contrast with the group's earlier statements on Kashmir. Days after taking control of Kabul, the Taliban had said Kashmir is a bilateral and an internal matter. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi on Thursday said, India's aim is to ensure Afghanistan's land is not used for terror activity of any kind. Recently, a leader of Pakistan's ruling Pakistan Tehreek and Saaf government had said that the Taliban would help the country in liberating Kashmir from India. Several villages in Gorakhpur district of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state have been inundated due to floods following incessant rainfall. The situation remains grim as residents are forced to commute on boats provided by the local administration to carry on with their daily activities. The flood situation has remained grim in parts of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state, including in Gorakhpur district, where incessant rains have flooded the Rapti River, causing damage to temporary dams and submerging several villages. The flood water has entered houses, schools and other structures, making life difficult for locals who could only commute on boats provided by the local administration, as rain halted for a couple of hours on Thursday, bringing some respite. Villagers along with state irrigation department were seen trying to cover up the breaches and constructing new resistance barriers to prevent flooding. Now saate jaate hain. Jaise ki bhai chana tatkal mein nahi aata hai. Now phone karte hain to aata hai log. Jaise ki ration pata hi ho gaya, dawa ho gaya ra ho gaya. Time se dekhiye abhi gas laaye hain, cylinder abhi de raaye hain, fir jaayenge lekar. 
Meanwhile, home to the world's largest concentration of one-horned rhinos, the Kaziranga National Park in northern Assam state is also 70% submerged in flood waters, leaving several animals struggling to make it to higher ground, an official said. At least 13 animals have died so far due to the floods as per the data released by the Forest Department. Assam, famous for its tea plantations, is hit by seasonal flooding each year, forcing state and federal governments to spend millions of rupees on flood control. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban's co-founder Mullah Baradar will lead the new Afghan government, reports suggested on Friday even as the Islamist group worked to finalize positions. The new government's most immediate task is expected to stave off the collapse of an economy grappling with drought and the ravages of a conflict that killed an estimated 240,000 Afghans. Taliban co-founder and head of its political office Mullah Baradar will lead a new Afghan government, while Sher Mohammad Abbas is Tanikzai and Mullah Muhammad Yaqub will be in senior positions, and Haibatullah Akhundzada, the group's supreme religious leader, will focus on religious matters, reports suggested on Friday. The Taliban enforced a radical form of Sharia or Islamic law when it ruled from 1996 to 2001. But this time around, the movement has tried to present a more moderate face to the world, promising to protect human rights and refrain from reprisals against old enemies. The US, European Union and others have cast doubt on such assurances and said formal recognition of the new government will depend on action. The new government's most immediate task is expected to be stave off the collapse of an economy, grappling with drought and the ravages of the 20 years of conflict that killed an estimated 240,000 Afghans. Kabul residents on Friday lamented that prices of essential commodities have risen and businesses have dwindled since Taliban took control. Taliban officials have said the problems will ease once a new government is in place to restore order and have appealed to other countries to maintain economic relations. But these structural problems run deep. More on news from Afghanistan. Since seizing Afghanistan last month, the Taliban have shown a more moderate face and said they will respect women's rights this time round. However, many Afghans continue to live in fear, especially women who are dreading the loss of the gains they have made over the years in terms of civil rights. The fear reflects in the fact that the demand for burqas has skyrocketed and markets see increased sales after Taliban's arrival. With the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan, the fear among many Afghan women of losing the gains they have made over the past 20 years has also returned. This has resulted in increase in the sale of burqas in the country, shopkeepers see. During their 1996 to 2001 rule, women were required to cover their bodies and faces in a burqa and were barred from school, work or leaving the house without a male relative. However, the Taliban who captured Kabul and brought a chaotic end to the 20 years of war have tried to present a more moderate face to the world since they swept aside the US-backed government and returned to power last month. Taliban recently claimed that women need not compulsorily wear burqa, but a hijab, a headscarf, is must to be worn. <laughs> تقریباً خوب بود نه چندان از وقتی که امارات اسلامی افغانستان در افغانستان حاکم شده کاربار چادری تقریباً یک سی فیصد افزایش یافته بازارام فعلا فضا خدا خوب است دیگه ما خوش هستیم از امارات اسلامی افغانستان که اهمیت ما را گرفته فضل سان خداوند که هیچ کدام دوزی و جور و چپال و گپار ما نیاوریم Meanwhile, as Taliban leaders worked to form the new government, Kabul's daily wage earners said on Thursday there was no work in the Afghan capital. For the Taliban, growing economic hardship is emerging as their biggest challenge, with a sinking currency and rising inflation adding misery to a country 
where more than a third of the population lives on less than two US dollars a day. ما اینجا بیچاو گامیدیم به کاریگری دیگه خشنه ده سر حال هستیم هر کدوم ما اینجا آمدیم به بیچاو میشینیم یک کار هست نیه روزگار هست نیه دیگه دیگه او را میده قیمتی هم هست یک بجار در دو هزار دو سر دو هزار سی هست نیه کار هست نیه غریبی هست کشتو کنیم بیادر دیگه اینجا آمدیم میشینیم مرکش در کار هم نمیبره کلی مردم در پرایشان و سرگردان و لالاوان هست Many Afghans were struggling to feed their families amid severe drought well before the Taliban militants seized power. And millions may now face starvation with the country isolated and the economy unraveling, aid agencies say. Moving on. Tibetans in India on Thursday celebrated the 61st Democratic Day to mark the establishment of the democratic system by their spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, in 1960. President of the Tibetan government in exile said democracy is indispensable for the political, economic and cultural development when Tibet gets freedom from the Chinese rule. President of Tibetan government in exile Penpa Sering on Thursday said democracy is indispensable for the political, economic and cultural development when Tibet gets freedom from the Chinese rule. Sering made the remarks during the 61st Democratic Day celebration in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala to mark the establishment of the democratic system by Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. On this day in 1960, democracy was introduced by the Dalai Lama and since then the Tibetans are electing their members of parliament in exile, prime minister and the council of ministers. Democracy is the most important resource to keep alive our freedom struggle and combine our capabilities when Tibet regains its freedom democracy is indispensable for our for its political economic and cultural development meanwhile as part of the celebrations amid the coronavirus pandemic a limited gathering of Tibetans was seen in Shimla city and Indian capital New Delhi Tibetan government in exile has been functioning in India since 1960 after the current Dalai Lama and many others fled Tibet following a failed uprising against the Chinese occupation of their homeland in 1959. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's famous Pinnawala elephant orphanage in the Central Hills recorded a rare twin birth this week as a 25-year-old elephant named Surangi delivered male calves. They are the first elephant twins born in captivity in the island nation in nearly 80 years, wildlife officials said. The father of the twins is a 17-year-old elephant who is also an orphanage resident. Sri Lankan elephant experts said the previous birth of twins to a domesticated elephant was in 1941. Pinnawala is one of Sri Lanka's biggest tourist attractions and was set up in 1975 to care for wild elephants that needed to be rescued and treated for various injuries. There are around 7,500 wild elephants in total in the country. Apart from more popular sports like cricket and football, a lot of youngsters in India's Jammu and Kashmir are eyeing to shape their skills in squash, which is fast gaining popularity in the valley. Trainers from the local sports council are helping enthusiasts learn the nuances of the game. Squash is fast becoming popular among the youth in India's Jammu and Kashmir as sporting activities have restarted after relaxation in COVID-19 restrictions in the Union Territory. Apart from the more popular cricket and football, a lot of youngsters in Jammu and Kashmir's Srinagar city are actively participating and shaping their skills in squash these days under the guidance of trainers at the Jammu and Kashmir Sports Council. The participants, including boys and girls, said squash have been helping them not only remain physically fit but also mentally as they are now able to focus better in studies. ये गेम जो है अंग्रेजों ने लाई हुई है यहाँ पे तो ये बदकिस्मती है वैसे बच्चे अब आने लगे हैं इस गेम की ओर तो अब पहले से काफी है और हम लोग स्पोर्ट्स काउंसिल ने भी दो कोर्ट बनाए हुए हैं गिंदुन स्पोर्ट्स स्टेडियम में और आने वाले टाइम में पांच-छह महीने के अंदर-अंदर वो हमारे कोर्ट Squash is famously dubbed as the world's healthiest sport as it pushes strength, balance and agility of the players to the limit, 
The players said that the government should promote sports like other sports and they believe that better infrastructure will help in attracting more youngsters to the sport. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.